what is happening guys welcome on back to the live stream where we are going to be taking a look at what we can do to build a machine learning model or a deep learning model to be able to play forza as to where this goes who knows we'll see but today we are finally going to be getting into a little bit of the actual deep learning side of things and i mean it's really important to note that most of the time whenever you're doing machine learning deep learning whatever it is most types of modeling the hard bit is going to be collecting the data and pre-processing the data but if you cast your minds back to the last live stream where i suffered for about an hour we've got through the majority of that pain so we are going to be getting into a little bit of deep learning today ideally this is the bit where i feel at least a hundred percent confident 60 percent of the time so we shall see how this actually goes Anyway, how you doing, Clout for You? How you doing, Brian? How you doing, Kevin? How you doing, Snowflake? How you doing, Strawberry Dude? How you doing, Yun? Welcome all to the live stream. Alrighty, I reckon we jump straight into it and get writing some code. I'm gonna try to make these a little bit more like code challengey, so like a little bit more hardcore. Obviously, we're gonna still do the the coding, but who knows? We'll see where where we take these live streams. It's gonna get like in Sydney at the moment at this present moment because it's kind of like veering off out of winter or whatever the colder months are it starts getting really really hot towards the end of the day and i'm sitting in front of like some big windows and it gets super hot here at night so we'll have to see what we do for the live streams going on from there but they will still keep going we'll just have to work out where we go how you doing wesley how you doing animaniac i have no idea how to read russian but i'm gonna say hello to the last person that said hello what's happening all righty guys let's kick this off let's get right in some code also are you guys enjoying the the code that challenges at the moment in the shorts let me know if you are enjoying them give me a give me a thumbs up in the comments all right let's do this okay whoa that is super exposed uh let's uh let's let, let's just drop that down a little bit because that making me look like um part vampire there we go look at me look at me adding a 10 in real time yeah now uh, let's looks all right yeah yeah oh it's probably because these lights are super bright as well that's probably mm, let's change this but all this magic you're seeing behind the scenes normally i set this up beforehand but clearly your boy wasn't on his game today but all right let's do this let's write some code so uh d drive cd youtube Oh, I'm seeing thumbs up. So you guys like the the code that changes? Yes, dude. I honestly make love it, making them so much. It's it's. One day I'll show you guys how I memorize the code beforehand to try to work out what I'm gonna have to code during the live stream. All right, we're in Forza ML. Um, what's inside of here again? I haven't looked at this since last week. So we need to activate our environment. Forza scripts activate. How you doing, Amir Uh All right, and then we're going to activate Jupiter Lab. So the nice thing about from where we go from here is I've got a reasonably good idea of how to code up this neural network. We're, we're going to start with like a non... We're not going to be doing um, reinforcement learning. We're just going to try to build a baseline neural network to begin with. So we can actually run through this data pipeline. I hope the GPU holds up because we're streaming and we're doing deep learning. It's always fun. Let's run through all of this. Let's make sure it still picks up our data. Hey, Don Muhammad, what's happening? Oh, that's looking good so far. All right, we can run our key press pipeline. You know what I was thinking about it over the weekend? We went through all this drama to get this array in this shape. We could have just done the pre-processing right from the get-go. Oh no, we're not going down this route again. We could have done this pre-process key press. That is, have I not defined this? We could have actually done that as we're collecting the data rather than, rather than actually doing it in post. That actually probably would have made our life a, a ton easier. Uh, okay, what's happening here? So dataset.map. Have we not read in our data? I'm guessing we've got rid of... All right. See, this is what happens, guys. All right. So this should be data set equals data set equals data set. 
uh, tf.data dot data set dot list files. Remember, I think I taught you guys how to do this last week. So this was um, doing the wildcard search. So it should be os.path.join. And then we're going into the data folder. Make sure my head isn't covering that. I was also learning how to edit videos with um, with Premiere Pro today. I normally edit with Final Cut, but um, I was doing some stuff for work and I had Final uh, Premiere Pro on this computer. Um, you know what? It's not bad. After doing a little bit of uh, like changing some keyboard shortcuts, way, way better. Okay, so tf.data.dataset.list file. So this should establish a, the beginnings of our data pipeline. I don't know. We must have deleted that last time. We don't need that. So this should bring in our data from here. And then we're going to run our magic pi function. So tf.py function, this is just converting it into a string. Oh, what have we done? No, this was meant to be so easy today. Pass is not defined. Oh, wait, hold on. We're meant to do it. I already had it down here. Okay. Ignore me, guys. It's going to be easy. <laughs> Famous last words. It's going to be easy. Said no coder ever. All right, we need pre-process key press, wrap array, and then this should do it. Okay, there we go. All right, cool. There's a data set. Whew. I was stressing out a little bit there. I was getting PTSD, just kicking in. I'm like, oh my gosh, where is this going? Monday blues down. <laughs> all right, cool. Uh, all right, let's combine these pipelines. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, I was getting a little stressful going down. That, that, that was stressing me out. Okay, cool. So we got the mix shabap. I remember teaching you guys. All right, let's do some deep learning. Uh, no, that should be why. Well, let's actually convert. Do we even need this? Let's close that. All right. Deep learning. What are we doing? All right. Getting every shortcut and none of them are relevant. All right. So good. Let's stick with our, so build data pipeline. So the next thing that we're going to do is do deep learning modeling. Okay. All right. Cool. So what do we need? So from tensorflow.keras.models import sequential. And then from tensorflow.keras.layers import conv2d. So that will be a convolutional neural network layer. Then we'll probably need a dense layer. There may be a flattened layer. And we'll go from there. All right, then we're going to instantiate our models. So model is going to equal sequential. So like when I was first learning deep learning, I used to always go sequential, but like there's, if you watch the GAN video, or if you watch, I just realized I didn't have noise cancelling. If you watch the GAN video, or if you watch, um, what's the other one? There's another one where I use the functional API. Super important to note, because um, they're, they're very powerful in each of their own, or in each of their way. Okay, what are we doing? So we've got our sequential model, and now we can add a bunch of layers. So we can model.add conv2d let me actually just quit sorry i can't help myself so when you're defining a like a functional api what you actually do is you create like an input layer and you'd actually import input from here and then from there you'd actually stack these together and you'd consolidate them inside of the model api so rather than just running model.add you actually go model and then you go inputs i think it's inputs equals whatever x input is and outputs equals whatever axis outputs you've got so that that's how you define your model with the functional api super useful to use it to know understand both because there's certain deep learning applications that you can't just use a straight sequential model for all right com 2 d we need the number of filters that we want so let's say i don't know 64 and then we need what do we typically need here the stri uh, the kernel size which is going to be three stride we're going to leave that and then activation Let's say, uh, I don't know, my favorite's ReLU. And then we need input shape. Input shape. And that's going to be equal to the size of our images. So if we go data set. Where's our image data pipeline? 
images over here. So let's take a look at the shape of our images because we're going to need the shape. So images uh, dot as numpy iterator dot next. Give me the first one dot shape. That's 960 by three channels. So we could have actually compressed that. Let's not do it now. We'll come back. 960. Uh, so it'll be 160 by three. Let's just run that for now. And we need to close that. Input zero of layer comp do is expected min dim four full shape received. None 960 by three. Input dim. Oh, go. oh my gosh. Told you it was going to be easy, guys. <laughs> Famous last words. Uh, key input underscore none. What are we doing? Input dim. That should work. Oh my gosh. All right. So we'll look on 2D. Let's flow. What can we put in here? So it should be input shape. We need to pass through batch size. Didn't think so, but all right. Okay, maybe there, there we go. But is that not going? All right, let's just build based on that model dot add and then conv 2D. So let's stack a bunch of conv 2 D layers. So I don't know, 128. Kernel shape is going to be three uh, activation. Equals ReLU again. We could probably add some skip connections if we really wanted to. Got a typo up here. Let's make it simple for now. And then we'll add a flatten layer. Modeled. Oh, we could actually add a max pooling layer. Global max pooling layer. Let's go flatten. And then model.add. We'll add some dense layers. 128. Uh, activation equals relu so this is the thing right like when you build memory paths it's you remember the code but sometimes you get a little flaky on the implementation so always good to practice this is why i always do five lines of code a day if i can like i, I try my best i don't always hit it but um all right cool so because our key press has five different values we're going to have five values down here our activation here because we want a um what do we want we're going to do a multi-class classification model to begin with so our activation is going to be what is it softmax wait is it softmax yeah and then let's see if that works so what have we done we are missing a quote there that's our model so i can type in model.summary all right, that's what our model looks like. Oh, this is huge. Hmm. Let's condense this down. And what have we done? So gets rid of that. Up, oh, still huge. Oh, we need to re-instantiate our model. Let's grab this. Put it here. Boom. Yep. We've got a ton of parameters so let's increase our kernel size so we'll go let's go five actually let's go yeah five now five four three probably two what if we get rid of this line all right so we're now down to 15. still pretty big that's right let's deal with that for now Okay, so we've now got our deep learning model. So let me explain all the magic that I've just gone and written there. So input shape is going to be four. Wait, no, that's our output shape. See, we haven't done this right. 100% we haven't done this right. So we need width, height. Wait, what are we doing? Our image should be two dimensions. There's something wrong with our images, guys. We'll come back to that. Okay. Because it really should be height by width. This is why I was stressing out width by channels. 
we have only two channels when we take a look at our image data set. If I type in images, images, we're 960 by three. So that means we've cut out a channel somewhere. That is my, oh, we've cut out, yeah, we've condensed something somewhere. Let's just quickly check the chat because I'm going through this hyper fast today because your boy wants some pizza. Um, Ushagra, love you. You are the reason I'm completing my internship project. Yes, you go crush him, dude. Are key presses paired with screenshots because some of the screenshots don't have any key presses? Yeah, so what was we? What, what was we? Um, so because we went and set shuffle equal to false up here, they should be reading in sequentially. So the file name, yes, the key presses are matched to, to screenshots when we go and write them out. Is 64 the number of neurons? Yes. Uh, I think those are encoded zero, zero, zero. Yep. I don't know if we've actually gone and brought in any negative samples, Wesley. Can you explain to us why 128.64? Half the time, it's just optimizing what the model size, what you want the model to look like. But for you, yeah, you could definitely use global average pooling. But no, we've got an issue with that image data set. Because if we, let's just quickly take a look at this. So images, I've got a feeling it's to do with that batch. Yeah, because remember the batch screwed up our key press in the last session. So images dot as numpy iterator dot next. Yeah, so that's cool. Then if I go dot shape. Right, so take a look at that. So we've got 540 by 960 by 3. But when I go and batch it over here, Let's take a look at x. x dot shape. 8 by 540 by 960. Wait, hold on. So we're good. Your boy's losing his mind. Len x. Oh, it's because we're grabbing. There you go. Okay, so I was. Because this is unbatched. So, all right, there you go. So it should be 540 by 960 by three. This is gonna make our neural network even bigger now. Boom. Okay, yeah, now it's gonna be a monster. Take a look, it's pre-processing. I'm getting the feeling that we're gonna run out of memory. We're already at the max. Out of memory. All right, guys, just fun fact. If ever you get this error that you can see on the screen here, OOM when allocating tensor with shape, blah, 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 and type blah. That basically means that you've run out of memory on your GPU if you are using your GPU. So one thing, let's just simplify this a ton. So if I get rid of, well, that layer, let's get rid of this dense layer here. And let's actually stop this, uh, let's stop this kernel. Uh, we can actually just go kernel, restart kernel. That should free up some memory. Take a look. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so we're back down to nothing there. This is why I'm seriously thinking about getting that giant new GPU, but I'm going to take your lead. If you want me to get it, you let me know and maybe we'll upgrade this computer. All right, so because we're out of memory, so we've got to free up the memory and then rerun through this pipeline. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay, that looks okay. Looks okay. Where are we? Boom. That's still fine. We can get rid of this. How big's our model? Our model is 325 million parameters. This is no bueno. This is going to cause maximum issues. All right. So how do we make this way smaller now? So there's a couple of things that we can do. So we can drop, we can compress the size of our images. We can grayscale them as well. We can increase the stride as well. So what if we did that? Strides, let's go three, three. How big is our model? All right, so we're now down to 4.1 million. Still big, but it's definitely working. So stride, let me explain what stride does. So stride basically, so if you imagine, let me jump back over to, actually let's, let's bring up the breakdown board. 
Bring on out the breakdown board. We haven't done the breakdown board today. We've got to do it. Okay, there we... Breakdown board's not showing up. Come on. You got this. Have I gone and unplugged something? Okay, maybe we don't have breakdown board today. It's drawing over here. But you thought this uh, this text stream channel was just always going to work? <laughs> All right, good. clearly breakdown board doesn't want to work today. Anyway, so basically, let me just jump over to the chat then. No breakdown board today. Yeah, I know. All right. So basically it, the stride is how far. So if you imagine your convolutional neural network has got these little filters. So imagine this is a filter, right? And we're looking at this is the image that it's passing through. So imagine that this is my filter here. The stride di dictates how far each part or how far this filter actually moves each time we move or each time it actually goes and processes the image. So it'll go here. And then if I set it to one, it might be like there. If I set it to three, it might be like, boom, like there. So basically we're compressing and skipping over way more data when we're setting our stride to a larger number. So if you think about it that way, just like how fast it's sliding around the image, that, that is what stride does. Now, because we're sliding more, that basically means we're compressing less data because we're, we're not, we effectively don't have as much overlap. There you go. Okay, that is the beginnings of our neural network done. So again, sometimes like a big part, so a lot of people ask me like, how do you design these neural networks? A big part is just working out one, how do I get the input to map to an output? And then two, how do I structure this neural network so that it's efficient and that it's actually gonna fit into my GPU memory? Half the time, that's what I'm considering when I'm building these. So in this case, we've got our model down to 4.1 million parameters, pretty reasonable. So then what we can do is run model.compile we need to specify an optimizer. So I'm going to choose Adam and then we need to specify a loss. So we can go tf.losses. Uh, what do we need? Categorical cross entropy. Boom. And then I can run model.fit. I should be able to pass through x, y, epochs equals, I don't know. Let's just do like four epochs. Normally I'll just do one just to see if it's actually going to work or we're going to fail. There you go. All right. So shapes one comma five and none are incompatible. Uh, okay, so let's just go, how do we do this now? So we need to reshape that final output layer. We could do like a lambda layer. Hmm. So let me explain what's happening here. So basically you can see that we've got our shapes here, but right now, because remember we encapsulated our key presses inside of a second set of arrays to deal with this thing that was happening over here. So you can see they're double encapsulated, right? We don't really want that. I wonder if we should just add in this data pipeline is getting a little bit messy now. So we could extract it out of here. I know there's a way to do it in, with TensorFlow Lambda layers, but I, I haven't done it before. And to be honest, I don't want to go down that route just yet. I wonder if we could fix it up or fix up our original. So if I drop the wrap array function, is this, all right, so that looks okay for now. If I go and batch, Right, and then show me why it's heat. No, it's screwing up. All right, so if, let's wrap it here and then maybe unwrap. I'm not happy with this though. Full disclosure, my OCD is driving me insane right now. I'm not happy with the way that works. We're going to fix that up eventually. Okay, so why? So we can effectively go and add in another map step over here to unpack this. So data set equals data set dot map. And then we're going to create a new function, def unpack uh, y value. And we are going to be passing through two components to here, so x and y. 
So we're going to return X, that's fine. And then uh, Y should be, the Y is going to be a set of, going to be a set of, uh, it's going to be an array. So I'm just thinking now, what is the smartest way to go and do this? It could be just NP dot expand, expand dims, no, NP dot squeeze. And then if I go axis equals one, see if that works, unpack Y. Nope, we got an error. Uh, and NumPy is not defined. Uh, we can use TensorFlow anyway. So uh, I think, is it is it still tf.squeeze? So tf.squeeze, let me explain what's happening here. So I'll import NumPy just to show you what we're doing first. Import NumPy as NP. So if I go mp.random dot rand n one comma ten comma five, right? So that's my big array. So but you can see it's it's encapsulated in another set of arrays. So I can actually go np.squeeze and that should take out that first set of arrays. So you, do you see that there? So boom. So that's the let me show the result before. Uh, let's show both of them. So boom. So take a look. So you can see that we've got three sets of arrays there. And then over here, we've gone and en encapsulated or extracted it out. So that's what we're going to try to do there. Yeah, so Wesley, you're going completely down the right path. That's effectively what I'm doing there. So uh, we want to do it with TensorFlow though. So TensorFlow... Squeeze. Yeah, all right, so we can use TensorFlow squeeze. So tf.squeeze. Try that. So we don't need that. Boom. That looks like it's worked. Okay. Len X, Len Y. All right, they, uh, is this still double encapsulated? Nope, that's no bueno. So let's remove this. I think we need to recreate the data set. Let's just grab this. Recreate that. Okay, there you go. So you can see we've gone and unpacked it now. And that's effectively what we want it to look like. Cool. So if we go and train, maybe. Cross your fingers, guys. This is looking promising. The only thing that I'm thinking is that maybe we're out of memory on the GPU. We got it. Take a look. So we've effectively gone and fit one step. Loss is terrible because we trained for one epoch. But if we went and trained for, I don't know, let's train for like 100. Actually, we can set verbose equals to true. We should be able to see all the logging. Is it inside of here? Invalid key, I heard arguments, verbose. Is it verbose? I can never remember what it is. TensorFlow, compile, verbose, it is verbose, oh, it's two, sorry, you don't pass true, verbose equals two, nope, invalid keyword argument, all right, nope, I'm pretty sure we pass it to the compile function, But both equals one. Let's just do it without it. Because we've only run it once. I could have sworn it was... All right, there we go. We're printing it out. But there you go. Look, our loss is decreasing. It is... That is not good. So I've got a feeling our data is crap right now. All right, but we've at least prototyped a model. There's something super weird going on here. Mm. All right, we're going to have to dig into it. But that was the goal today. At least get a prototype model to a point where we can kick off training. But this is there's something weird going on with this. Either the data or the key press. Softmax is the appropriate. What's the softmax function look like? Softmax. Uh, no, hold on. It's not meant to be a softmax. 
I'm trying to think of the activation function now. Tensorflow activation. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Activation. Yep. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is softmax. Hmm. Someone earned their pizza. Hell yeah, I did. Anyway, we're going to fix this tomorrow. We'll, or, yeah, we'll do it tomorrow. But that at least gives us our initial model. I'm not happy with there's something wrong here that we're going to have to go and fix up. Either the loss function or the final activation layer. We've got to go and double check whether or not that is appropriate. But uh, And we also don't have a ton of data. So who knows where this could be learning from. Like we've got, we've got eight batches and then len data set. Five. So we've got literally, what, four, 40 different samples. So it's nowhere near enough data to actually get an appropriate model. But that is the beginnings of our deep learning model. We are going to be cranking this out and if, uh, I guess fine tuning from here. So this is sort of how I build, right? Build as fast and as hard as possible. And then I'll go and circle back and work out what we need to fix and what we need to improve going forward. But we already have a number of things that we know we need to go and improve because we've been collecting this along the way. But that is the commencement of our deep learning model sort of built up. So you've at least sort of seen that done. All right, back over to the chat. Hell yeah, Nick earned that pizza. Thanks so much, Rapunzel. Um, so Wesley, so we could remove one dimension from the key presses with NumPy. Yeah, so we I did it with TensorFlow because that's best practice when you're building TensorFlow data pipelines. Bruno, SPFC, 4 a.m. in Brazil, let me make my coffee. <laughs> Kevin, so no small question, Nick, small question, not relative to this project, but to the sign recognition tutorial. I tried to use your tutorial for emotion recognition based on the video using MediaPipe, but I don't know if my data is bad or MediaPipe is not the right solution. For emotion type stuff, I think I'd actually just do like a face detection model and then a classifier over the top of it. You could do it with the key point model, but I think you'd actually need quite a fair bit of data. Um, that's just something to keep in mind. Yeah. All right. Are there any questions that I missed? Um, global average pulling. I think we got through that. Why not approach the problem by phases? Drive forward, turn left, turn right, break, close the line. So that that's an example like multi-step. Um, oh no, just like Gran Turismo license. So, so that will be like skill-based learning. So you'd probably be using, um, I'm trying to think what, what the term for, for it was. I talk about it inside of the doom model. It's, it's a way to, uh, curriculum learning. It's called curriculum learning. So basically you level up and teach it progressively different steps. No breakdown board. I'm going to go breakdown board broke down. Yeah. I'm going to have to do breakdown boards. Clearly having a bit of a cry uh, right now. It's right here. I could see the iPad on It just, I oh, know it's having a bad day. I, I'll give it a break. It's, it's a Monday. It, it, we'll, we'll get it tomorrow. King Luffy, YT from India. What's happening, man? Thanks so much for tuning in. All right, guys. I think if we've got no more questions, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next one, probably tomorrow. Maybe some shorts, maybe some more code that coming along. Catch ya. Peace.